So today we thought we'd uh, get uh, check out how the uh, Vista Canyon community is uh, coming along. We're here at uh, sort of the one of the entrances, the main entrance, I would say, at this point in time to the to the Vista Canyon. And as you can see, there is a uh, tremendous amount of building that's already being done here. Let's see if I can get the zoom camera to uh, to work. But um, the idea behind this community is that it's uh, mixed between uh, lots of different sizes and styles of of apartments, along with uh, right currently they have two different residential. Uh, units uh, built by KB, the um, the Auburn and the uh, Bluma, which had three floor plans each, and we're going to be looking at those uh, more specifically in just a few minutes. So as we cross the bridge here, um, coming into the first section of the Vista Canyon development, you might notice that the 14 freeway is there on your left. Uh, so we are east of the 14 freeway just before you get to the Sand Canyon exit. So this particular area here is the uh, one of the uh, multi-apartment uh, complexes that you see here. And um, they're building quite a few. And it seems like the, the apartments are gonna be on one side of the, of the community, of the Vista Canyon area. Um, and then the, uh, the residential homes that you can own or purchase are on the other, and we'll be touching on those momentarily. Over on the left, we have a water plant. They have done, taken great strides to recycle and to be able to use as much reclaimed water as, as possible uh, for all of these particular units that we have, have here. So, uh, oops, as we come through the area, now there's gonna be a little bit of uh, business development. There's gonna be uh, office space and both commercial and retail. And uh, kind of an example of that retail is this building here we have on the right. And we'll just kind of cruise by there real quick just to see. It looks like they've got uh, some kids out there doing some karate lessons outside. Can't really see it right now through all the cars. But there they are, just over there. Um, outside, due to the COVID, I would imagine, I imagine the indoor anything is probably not quite ready yet. So as we move along a little more here, just we're again still in the apartment area we've got uh, some looks like some major parking structure here on the left so a lot of the people you have to ask yourself well gee where are people going to park and it looks like they have uh, uh, parking structures and of course that would be for the uh, apartments i don't know exactly all the different types of sizes of uh, leasing that they have here but i imagine judging from the number of buildings they have going on that it's it's um it's uh, pretty extensive So now we are more headed off to the uh, the residential, or I guess this is all residential, but the um, the owned properties that you can purchase and own as opposed to the lease, the KB Homes development, which is uh, down here. Apparently there's gonna be quite a bit of open space. They say approximately 100 acres. 100 acres. Under construction is this massive transit center. And there's this is where they're also the fourth Santa Clarita uh, Metrolink station is going to be. Uh, over the time it's nice to be able to have easy access without having to drive the freeways to get to work wherever that may happen to be and yet at the same time uh, be not having to deal with living in uh, the heart of uh, the city. So as we cruise through the uh, the neighborhoods just checking things out you know, uh, those are the train tracks over there, and it looks like they're just doing more, getting more pads ready here on the right. Gorgeous oak tree, wow. See the 14 freeway, well, apparently there'll be more access as it comes along to that 14 freeway. And now we're, just to give you a general idea of where we are, we are kind of heading, if we keep going down this road a little bit, we'll actually end up at the Sand Canyon road or the Sand Canyon entrance exit to the uh, 14 freeway. So we go just a little further ahead here. We will be in Sand Canyon. So here we go, heading into the KB Homes. Okay, so here now we're at the uh, new sales office. We're going to go in and see if we can uh, get some up-to-date information on what's going on. So let's see if uh, we can get in the door. 
quickly see just how welcome we are or whether they uh, insist on everybody having an appointment. So Sandy will go ahead and poke her head in and see if we can even get in the door. Doors open, it's a good sign. So, so we're indoors now, so therefore, of course, masks on. We're uh, checking in. We actually do get to get some information on the properties, which is nice. And we, um, Sandy's filling out the uh, form, we call them the PEDS. Those are the forms that uh, basically declare that we're not currently affected uh, by, the, by the COVID. So Sandy's getting that turned in, and then we'll be able to, from there, hopefully go do some more looking at this place. Okay, so this is Blue Motor. Apparently there are six. I don't know if we can get to all of them here. And uh, we uh, got past the first hurdle. Nice thing about coming out here during the week and having uh, relationships with the uh, sales staff is that we can take a look and get past the gauntlet sometimes, get a little special pre preferential treatment. So this is kind of an interesting situation. So there's six floor plans apparently divided among two different groups of houses. The, uh, we have, this is kind of the way the setup will be. So they are, looks like they're set up as large square footage properties uh, on um, a high density lot scenario. Okay, so in this neighborhood or in this section, we have the Blumas, which are the smaller floor plans. And then um, on the opposite side of the uh, sidewalk, we have the Auburns, which are the largest ones. That one started at 2300 square feet. Um, and they, we have uh, three of those models here. So as we go in the, uh, the first of the floor plans here, we'll go ahead and take a look and see what these are generally uh, dealing with on these properties. So this, uh, as I go in, this does have what we would refer to as a more modern uh, where the uh, setup where the kitchen, living room, family room are pretty much uh, put together as one great room. And then bedrooms and all would be upstairs. Sandy just went ahead and coming back down from doing the upstairs bedrooms. And these, this particular one is three. But what we're dealing with as far as in general for these properties, it looks like these are pretty much uh, the style of what we call almost, we refer to as maybe as a detached townhouse in the fact that there is a little patio, but not necessarily, not necessarily a big yard, but so it's like a large townhouse, but is, uh, but not actually attached. So, uh, but the important thing, of course, which is the living area, it's modern design done very, very well. So it just kind of depends on how important the big yard is, is to you. And of course the price range will affect that, your choices too. Uh, this unit is a little bit different in that it's obviously it's an end unit and what makes it unique is it's, the setup is a little bit different uh, and it has a bigger yard because it is uh, an end unit. Obviously, you haven't, this is an in unit, you have nobody looking into your yard. Okay, these are the Auburn uh, section of the, uh, this particular area. Uh, the bloom is the last one we ran, 1690 square feet. This is the Auburn, it has a little bit over 2300 square feet. Uh, much bigger living area, as you can see. And the we think that um, these seem, the Auburns seem to have a bigger option yard, a bigger yard. You've got a nice counter island here, uh, a pantry, um, access, direct access, of course, to the garage, and a good size living area. Now, in this first Auburn model uh, that it has a 23, we're still in the one, 2300 square feet. This is the master suite. Uh, plenty of room for a big bed. Got a walk in closet. Nice windows, lots of light. And the bathroom, you have a separate tub and shower. Uh, nice two sinks. Here is 
uh, uh, feature. It's a loft. It could be a separate um, entertainment area other than the, uh, the main living area downstairs for TV, games. Uh, it also, I believe, has the option of having it as a uh, bedroom. A lot of times builders will do that. They will have a, uh, a loft and then uh, when you pick this floor plan, the original owner can make it a bedroom or a loft. All of these four, all of these homes have solar, which is kind of normal now. It's nice because the master is on one side and the other bedrooms uh, are on the opposite side of the house. Okay, here's the last model that we're going to look at for the Auburns. And the unique thing about it is that it has an entrance onto the street. Whereas the others that we looked at, both in the Bluma and the Auburn, had their front doors that uh, opened up to the walkway, not to a street. Again, a downstairs optional room and an open living area. The modern thing these days. White cabinets. A lot of these... Uh, Things that you are seeing in the kitchen now are obvious and throughout the unit are obviously upgrades and you can pick those to match whatever your decorating style is. Again, this one has the, uh, I don't know about this. This one looks like it just has a little patio. Okay, we looked at the Auburns and the Blumas today. Uh, the Auburns starting price is today is six twenty seven nine nine nine, and the Blumas starting today is five fifty six seven ninety nine. Okay, so we uh, just uh, left the sales staff here, and uh, we're just kind of getting an idea here of what it looks like on the outside. So uh, you can see a little bit in the distance the construction going on, and so this is kind of how the neighborhood would look um, as far as the houses go. A lot of these sold. We learned a little bit at the uh, the, the sales development. They're, they're eight to ten months out. So by the time you, you know, if you pick a property today, it would be uh, eight to ten months before it was ready for move-in. Uh, the policy under certain circumstances, and we would need to talk to you about that is to make sure you're cool is that they would uh, sometimes consider a contingent offer, meaning that they're letting you get your house sold if that was an issue. And there are different ways to work around that. Uh, but we, that's one of those things we would just need to sit down and, or not sit down these days, get maybe a video call or just an old fashioned phone call and see what, uh, what can be worked out. So if this is something that might be of interest, we can make it, uh, get you some information and make it a lot easier to, to actually pull it off. So this is, gives us a little bit of an idea of what the, uh, the garage entrance or the streets look like. Like most people do these days, they pull into their garage and, and never use their front door because there's no uh, front driveway here. But this is kind of the setup that they've got going. Kind of the best way to look at these are really, really big, nice townhouses, yet um, not attached like a townhouse would obviously be. Not common. So we move down one of the other streets. Looks like this is uh, sort of a recreation site here. A, uh, go ahead and move in on this and uh, we can see what, uh, I don't know if you can see cars moving over in the distance in the background, but that would be the 14 freeway. We're kind of facing northwest right now. And um, just give you a little bit of bearings as to uh, where we are.